Hey guys, it's Steve here from Nostalgia. Just wanted to chat with you guys about the latest update to Bleem Sync for your PlayStation Classic hack. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that webpage that shows it. And there's been a couple new releases since the last one that I had done um, with some pretty big changes, which is uh, really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the releases button. And you can see right now the current release is Bleem Sync 0.4.1. Um, but before we chat about what they've changed in 4.1, well, let's talk about 4.0. Uh, this is a really big change. So they've added um, an automatic metadata scraper. So inside of each game folder, we were editing a game.ini file, and then we were putting in the disk data, we were putting in the name of the, the game, we were putting in the number of players, who the publisher was, and, and all the information related to the game. What they've uh, attempted to do is install something like an automatic scraper that will attempt to download the information and game cover art from their own central database if you don't already have it. Now, one thing I do want to mention is uh, I played around with it a little bit. It's not perfect. If the game title isn't perfect, uh, if the, the bin and queue files aren't labeled correctly, you're not going to get any draws. And there's a bunch of games that aren't functioning. You can, I believe they have a link in the latest update that will show you where the, the problem areas are. But something else that was actually released with the 4.0 is the two player controller support. So as I'd mentioned in my previous video, they were in the process of installing some coding that would allow you to install a USB hub. Uh, it is now working. So I've actually got a USB hub connected into my PlayStation Classic. I will show you guys that really quickly before we switch over to the Classic. And um, it's functioning really well. So I was able to get some two player games running, no problems, everything runs perfect. The USB hub makes, uh, makes it a lot more enjoyable. So it's no longer a single player console when it's hacked. There's another option here. It says Bleem Sync will now run on boot. This feature can be disabled by deleting the system slash Bleem Sync uh, folder. That is only going to be important if you care about um, having them automatically pull the game.ini folder. Uh, I personally just fill it out myself. I, I prefer to do it all myself. I know what quality artwork I'm going to get. I know all the information is going to be correct if I do it myself. Um, but I mean, for those who want to do it, feel free to. What they're indicating here is that if the boot uh, takes a long time, if you, you power on your PlayStation Classic and it's like, 15, 20, 30 seconds of black screen before it switches over. Um, that is how you would solve that problem. You just remove that folder inside the systems folder, the Bleem Sync folder. You just delete it completely and that will no longer become a problem. Um, other than that, the pcsx.config has been added essentially for allowing a default configuration of pcsx. Uh, this will automatically be copied into each game so that way you don't have to worry about your controller not functioning properly. Um, it'll automatically be added into each game folder um, just on its own through the coding. Um, so that was what was new with Bleem Sync 0.4.0. Uh, 0.4.1, not much has changed. The only thing that they were having was a bug uh, in the serial detection for the images, which wasn't pulling the proper images. So it's, it's cleaned up a little bit. Again, I still prefer to do everything myself. I'll look for the artwork myself. I'll fill out the game.ini file myself. Um, and I just find that that's going to be the most accurate. It is substantially more time consuming. I spent the better part of two or three hours fussing along with it, downloading everything that I wanted, downloading, finding the proper artwork and making sure everything was labeled correctly. But I also know that now it's done properly and I don't have to fuss with it and try to figure it out later, um, trying to use some sort of automated system. So for me, I like to do it myself, but for those who aren't, uh, aren't wanting to or don't have the time to do it, that's now an option for you. But uh, that's pretty much it. Those are the updates. Uh, my my anticipation now is that the next big change that they're going to do in this hack is they're going to find a way to allow third party or different types of controllers to be used. I would imagine that now that um, I think 8BitDo has released the adapter to allow you to play PS4 controllers through the PlayStation Classic, that they're gonna do something to try to get you to connect in a USB controller, maybe an Xbox One controller or something with analog that would then allow you to access the analog feature and you could then upload games like Ape Escape that rely heavily on analog. So that's my next guess as to where they're gonna go, but in terms of what we've seen so far, it's pretty clean, it's running really well, aren't many glitches, 
Uh, big problem areas are that it's hit or miss based off of the brand and make of USB that you're using. I have struggled really hard trying to figure out um, if it's a certain make or model that works really well, and I haven't had very much luck. I've messed around with probably about 10 or 15 different options. Uh, one thing I've noticed is anything over 32 gig has failed. It's I've maybe got it to run run one or two times after I've restarted the system, it ends up failing and I have to wipe it. Um, so right now the highest um, stable size memory card that I've been able to use is 32 gigs. Uh, and actually what I'm doing is I've got a micro SD card that's 32 gigs. I've loaded everything onto the micro SD card and that micro SD card is plugged in to a USB dongle, which is then plugged into the PlayStation Classic. I seem to be getting the best results that way. I have no idea if it has anything to do with faster read write capabilities of a micro SD versus the USB sticks that I was trying to use, um, but it seems to be working for me. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is previously you had to unplug your console, physically unplug the power, put in your USB, plug the power back in. That's no longer the case. So I don't know if they've adjusted the coding in that. So now, as long as the console's powered down, even if the power cord's in, if you pop the USB stick into player slot two, you wait a second and then you press the power button, it does boot up off of the USB stick. So that is that is a nice feature. It's uh, a little bit less work, so we don't have to unplug the console anymore. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch over quickly and show you guys the USB dongle that I've got connected and then I'm going to switch into the PlayStation Classic software so you can see the library I've got um, and we're going to go ahead and make that switch now. All right guys so we've got our PlayStation Classic set up here you can see my USBs connected in I've got a, a four port USB hub and then I've got my two controllers connected into it one to the side and then one right up in the front but uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over and check out the actual console so let's take a look. All right, guys, so here we are connecting into the PlayStation Classic, and you're going to see that I've got a ton of games. So right now, I've only got a 32 gig card loaded up. As I mentioned previously, I wasn't having any success with a 64 gig card, um, but I was able to get a, a ton of games on the 32 big, uh, sorry, the 32 gig card. Uh, right now, I've got, uh, I think, 50, 51 games, something like that. So you can see there's there's quite a few. And this is this is what the PlayStation Classic should have been. It should have been you know, 40 or 50 of their top games. Now, the games that I selected, I just kind of off the top of my head, games that I knew were good, um, and I threw them on there. There are a ton of games that I don't have on here that I'm sure people are gonna say, hey, why didn't you add this or why didn't you add that? It's just what I was thinking about loading up and, and kind of what I wanted to revisit from my childhood. Don't look at this as the top 50 games for PlayStation 1. Uh, this is just kind of what I thought would be nice to put together. So we've got, you know, 007, Bloody Roar, Breath of Fire 4, Castlevania, all the Crash games, Digimon, Dino Crisis, a couple Disney games, and we go on. We've got some Harry Potter, Legend of Lagaya, Medieval, Mega Man, all the Me uh, Mega Man Xs, and we've got a ton more. This is... This is Probably one of my favorite games of all time. I remember playing this game for hours, NFL Blitz 2000. Really good game. Even if you're not a sports fan, it is an absurdly fun uh, fun game to play. So give it a shot if you haven't already. Um, Rayman, we've got Resident Evil, Spider-Man, Space Jam, Spyros, um, Street Fighter, Tomb Raiders. We've actually got all five Tomb Raiders on there. Uh, Tomba, Tony Hawk's, this is a big one. This should... This should have been on uh, the PlayStation Classic on launch. It is probably the most iconic game for multiplayer that they made for PlayStation, and it 100% um, should have been on that console from, from launch, but I've got it now, so how about that, Sony? Uh, I've got a couple wrestling games and Xenogear. Now, what I wanted to show you guys really quickly, yes, the game collection's really cool, the carousel looks good, it, it loads really nicely, it functions properly, um, but I wanted to show you guys the um, the two-player support. So now that we've got the USB hub connected in, um, I just picked up a cheap one. This one was, I think it was like nine or 10 bucks at Walmart. And keep in mind that I'm Canadian. So we're talking nine or $10 Canadian. That's like what, seven bucks, 650 US. So um, yeah, really cheap USB hub. Didn't have to be anything special. I was concerned about compatibility. Keep in mind, I've only tested one. So I can't say for sure that they're all gonna work, but what I made sure to grab is a USB 2.0 hub. 
I know that we were struggling with some 3.0 USB sticks uh, to run the, the hack. So I figured let's just be safe and buy a 2.0 hub. So that's what I picked up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a game that I know is two player that I can jump into really quickly. We'll do some Street Fighter. We'll get that loaded. And then I'm gonna show you guys that both controllers are currently functioning at the same time on the USB hub. So we'll just let this load up for a second. Okay, so we're almost there. And what's interesting too about the PlayStation Classic, the load times are really, they're really not painful. I remember having terrible load times with the PlayStation. Um, but the way that it's set up now, since it's just pulling the data straight from a bin file, um, it's, it's, not so, it's not so painful to sit through and, and wait for it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna go into arcade mode. Oh, actually, and then I'm going to press the start button on the secondary controller So now you can see player two is active and you can see you can move around with player two and pick whomever you want I'm on player one uh, Don't mind. I'm currently having one hand on each controller trying to move it around to show you guys because I don't have a second person here with me uh, But what I'll do is I'll select a character for myself for you, And why don't we go with So let's go against Ken Select your fighting so, everything as standard. I'm gonna get into this as quickly as we can just to show you guys. Here we go. All right, so I'm not going to do a, an actual round. I'm just going to show you guys that the controllers both are working. So if I jump on player two, jump on player one, crouch on player two, crouch on player one, jump at the same time, crouch at the same time. You can see that they're both 100% independent and there's no input lag. Everything functions exactly how you would want it to as if it was plugged in through its own separate USB port. So everything is functioning really well. It is really good. Everyone's happy here. Um, I think this was a good move from the hacking perspective and uh, I think it's going to make a world of difference. Now you can play with somebody rather than being stuck playing the console by yourself. Um, that being said, PlayStation 1 was mostly known for RPGs, um, which usually are single player anyways, but uh, this kind of opens up the world to allow you to play um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, for example, with a buddy. Um, yeah, so it's pretty good. The only other thing that I wanted to mention as well, um, clearly you're still able to access the emulator menu by pressing select and triangle. Uh, when you do that and you get in here, uh, a lot of people didn't like that you have to physically stand up and press the reset button to get out of the game. If you actually go down to exit and you press X, it'll take you right back to the main menu. Now, it says that it's trying to save a resume point. It doesn't work. So the only way to actually create a save state is to physically get up and press that reset button on your PlayStation Classic. But if you're not looking to create uh, a save state and you just want to exit a game, for example, you're playing a fighting game, you are um, able to just press the select and triangle button, go down to exit and escape right out of the game. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys very much for um, watching the past few videos. I appreciate all the support. Tons of comments, tons of questions have been coming in. I've been doing my best to stay on top of it. Um, but keep in mind that this is just like a hobby of mine, the, uh, the YouTube account here, and I do have a full-time job. So um, I try to answer as quickly as I can, and I'm trying to help you guys through with the hack as much as I can. But uh, keep it up. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, but other than that, I'll see you guys later.